and he's gonna recover when the locust is stolen. Hallelujah. He already is. He's already before I was reaching up and grabbing, grabbing favor. So, so that was a prophetic. Should he said something about doing something different? The traditions of man, praying that off. There's a break. There's a break between traditions of man. What we think, how we think things are supposed to come, but God's gonna mess that up. Amen. God's gonna mess our way of thinking up Amen. because we're heavenly. We're heavenly beings. We've been brought into a new realm. We are ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I, I believe, uh, Elijah, you lost your quad, didn't you? And I, <laughs> and I decree to you right now, in Jesus' name, that quad will be replaced. Amen. In Jesus' name. And every one of you will get a new fishing rod. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You agree with me? God is bigger. And he will give back what the enemy tried to steal. Yeah. Amen. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> he already gave them all fishing rods. <laughs> fishing rods have already come in. <laughs> we had someone come by the house yesterday and buy all the boys new fishing rods. Oh. Say hallelujah! It's Jesus, it's God! Because he's faithful. Woo. And you know right now we can't get confused between the devil and God. We can't get confused. It's not God that comes to steal and kill and destroy. The enemy comes to steal and kill and destroy. God's come to give life and life abundant. And he makes beauty from ashes. And he takes all the bad, not some. He takes all, all the bad and he turns it into good for those who love the Lord. What is that? It's God. Praise he is mighty to save. It's incredible. He's faithful. And he knew exactly what was going on. So guess what? We get to rejoice in the midst of trials. We get to praise him because praising him lifts up the heavy yoke. You're going through something right now. I encourage you, crank up that worship music. Praise God. Worship him in the midst of the struggle. Get above it. Don't stay in it. Because I'm telling you, he walks you through the valley of the shadow of death. He walks you through it. You don't stay in it. He walks you through it. And he takes you from glory to glory. Not, not destruction to destruction. Glory to glory. And trust me, I've had so much destruction. Hey? But God is faithful. And he gives back tenfold what the devil's taken. That's right. We have to believe that and cling to him. Yes. Not us and not people. We cling to a God that is faithful. And so he's going to provide every need for people here. Not just for us, but everything that you need. Right now, Father God, I thank you for this house. I thank you for this family. Lord, I ask that every single thing that they need that you will provide for them in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I ask that you will walk with them that you will talk with them, that you will speak to the depths of their souls, that you will give them hope, that you will give them joy, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. God, I claim protection about these people in Jesus' name. And Lord, as it gets darker, we're going to get brighter. And so God, I ask, Lord, that these people shine bright for the kingdom of heaven, that everywhere they go, that they will be a shining light, a beacon on a hill that cannot be destroyed, because your foundation is firm. Your foundation is in the Lord. Thank you, God. Let it be, Lord Jesus. Guide them, protect them, make a way for them where there's no way. Let these be miracle people. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I've never seen God fear, fear, fail when something happens and you right away praise him. I'll uh, praise you, Lord God, in the midst of it. Hallelujah, Lord. Something good's coming, Lord. I've never seen it fail that something better comes out of it. That's right. In Jesus' name. That's right. Amen. We're going to take our uh, tithes and offering, but um, there's a GoFund page for Alan and Chrissy, but if you want to donate towards um, helping them at this time, just put Chrissy and Alan or the LePayne family on your envelope and... Uh, with whatever you're given to the Lord and uh, as we bring our tithes. So Father, once again, we thank you for your goodness. 
We thank you for your goodness and your wonderful works, Lord God, towards each and every one of us in our households. So, Lord, we come in faith and bring our tithes to you and our offerings and our extra offerings. Father, because we know whatever we give, we give back, we bless, we get peace, whether it's financial or spiritually or emotionally, Father. So we bring it in the name of Jesus and the love in our heart. We all say it. Amen. Not my way, Lord, but your will be done. Amen. Amen. 
We're not called to be the church of nice. We're nice people. But that we're called to be a victorious church, a church that goes through, a church that takes down the enemy. You know, we can't do it sometimes nicely. We want to take it authoritatively. And you can still be nice and be authoritative, believe it or not. But yes, we need to be merciful, but we need to be that church. Jesus Christ has called us to be a church of victory. Amen? Amen. So we talked last week about decreeing and our authority, so I'm going to just continue a little bit on it. And I'm going to talk about his word. That is the living word. That's our authority. The living word. He says his word will not come back void. Wow, you got to you know, people are you're trying to win somebody to the Lord and they argue with you all the time and you've got your opinion, you're talking to them, but if you give them the word of God, that will not come back for you. That will purpose what it's meant to do. There's actually an uh, in the Proverbs of David it says, only a fool would say there's no God. I've heard of many testimony of somebody just giving that to a person and the thoughts of God, that person repented and came to Jesus, because that's the word. Only a fool would say there's no God. Well, there's a lot of fools out there, but God's going to get them. Amen? He wants them. He loves them. He died for them. Amen? And he doesn't worry what you were thinking or used to believe. He just wants you to believe in him, right? So our, our words or our arguments do nothing. But if we use the word, or the word of the Lord, it'll hit its mark. Amen? Amen. So let's look at Mark 13, 31. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. His words are different. This is what he is saying. They are powerful. They are energized. They have authority to produce. Hello? His words are powerful. They will produce. They produce. Well, our words produce nothing, but the word of God produces. Amen. I don't know about you, but I like to see some production out of my words. Amen. I like to see some fruit. That's producing. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I would. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm always trying to learn to grow more. I always want to learn. I love learning. And I love applying what I've learned. You can learn and learn and learn and learn, but if you don't apply it, it's not going to do nothing. So start applying what you've learned and what you've heard, what you understand. And ask for understanding if you don't understand. Amen? Amen? Okay. So the only thing that produces a life is the Word of God. Amen. Our own words do not produce life. They might encourage, don't get me wrong. But what produces life is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Jesus says he uses his words to rule and reign the earth. Why? To rule and reign the earth. And we are joint heirs. That's that the body of Christ can get that. Whatever is our Father gave Jesus, he gave it to us. Simple stuff. We all know that. But are we walking like that? Are we walking like we're a king? Are we walking like a priest? Are we walking in that authority that Jesus has? Are we walking meek but yet powerful? Amen? Are we really walking in that? Or do we go out the church door and we come, oh, I'm going to face another day. You know, oh, I'm going to go to work and face that person. If you've got to go to work and face that person, then you can find the spirit behind it. Find that spirit of intimidation. Find that spirit of control. Find that whatever is coming at you. Find it in the spiritual realm and you'll see. And lift up your shield of faith, people. Don't look at it on the floor. It says lift up. Put it on. You quench all the fiery darts of the enemies. That's spoken words against you. Whatever he's got coming it's not going to penetrate. It might tend to that. But it's not going to penetrate. And you've got to be, we've got to be spiritual people. It's time. It's way past time. Amen? Amen. Amen. So here we are, joint heirs with him. And so we do the same thing that Jesus did. Now look at John 6, 63. It says, it's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. So what you do in the flesh profits nothing. The word, now look at this. The word quicken, it means to make alive. So the spirit makes alive, it means to vivify, it means to revive or resuscitate. Woo! I need resuscitation. How many of a lot of us need resuscitation? Even that and you're sitting here. Gosh, are you alive? <laughs> yeah. We need to know that we're alive, people. We're alive, people. You're not dead. You're alive. You were dead before you came to Jesus Christ. You were actually dead. 
But when you come and you receive him as your Lord and your Savior, believing that he took your sins to the cross and died for you and rose again, then you become born again and now you are alive. Let people know you're alive. I love it. I mean, what are we the word they have with the Lord? And we're laughing, talking about the Lord. Just, guys, what are you guys so happy about all so true? Because we got Jesus and everything. I think I took the whole gospel to him in that minute they come to look us. But that's why we're alive. Because we have Jesus. He is life. He is truth. He is a way. Because they don't know the way. They didn't even the boss us. So what are we going to do when you go? You know, where are we going to Jesus? I am the way. If you don't know your way, he is the way. If you don't know what life is, he is the life. Get to know him more, and he will bring life. If you don't know the truth, ask him, because he is the truth. And I'm always steering off of him. Bring me back, Lord. So the spirit quickens. It resuscitates us from death or an in, in an amazing state. So if you feel dead, get into the things of the spirit. Let the spirit quicken your body. Let it rise up and resuscitate you. Amen? That's revival in us. We go after revival for us. But I'm not going to see a revival. I'm going to see God come on the land. And where people, are just, they could be driving by, they'll stop and they'll get out of the car and they'll repent. Amen. Read about the revivals. This is what happens when he comes on the land. His presence. We had a touch in, a, in our old place. We tried to get out of our building one night. Someone had to crawl out the door. His presence was so thick. They couldn't stand up. And they crawled out of the door. This is just up there on top of the road. And we got out in the parking lot. The guys, some of them were already on the lease. We had a gravel dirt parking lot. And we all ended up on the dirt laughing and, and crying out to God. Amen. I mean, his presence. You know what the anointing actually means? I'm kind of going off here just a bit, but that's all right. You know what it means? It's a weightiness. So his weightiness sometimes will not even let you up. His way, I prayed over one man one time, and it was so thick with his presence. I had to, with all my strength, he was about maybe three feet away from me, and I had to push. It was like I was coming against the sick. I don't know what I could. With all my strength, to touch him. When I touched him, the shoot. And sometimes when we throw over you guys, you might feel the weightiness. I'm not pushing you. Don't forget, I would, I would disrespect God. It's the weightiness, and sometimes some people in here pray over you. You might get a little push, because we're getting a push. We're getting a weight coming on us. This is anointing. So if you don't understand the noise, you can think, oh, I hate people are just pushing us. No, we're not. And I don't have to push you. I can stay three feet away from you and speak something. If God wants you down, you go down. You don't have to go down, you get to go down. I don't understand why you told me don't try to figure it out. Amen? Amen. It doesn't mean you're spiritual or not spiritual. I'm just saying. So let's go to this quickening. Gives life or energy to something or someone. And so our churches, <laughs> the church of Jesus Christ, we need a resuscitation, Lord. Put those heart paddles on us and give us a jolt. I don't know, just give us a good jolt and get us going. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's not glorified in dead churches. Jesus is, a, is God of the living, but he's not glorified in a dead church. And we should not be that dead church. We're here because we're believers. And I encourage you to ask yourself before you come to the doors, are we believers? Words. 
that are so powerful and effective. Amen. Practice. Practice at home. Practice it. You know, we need to practice to know the authority and to speak authority and ask him. Lord, teach me your authority. Give me the revelation of authority that I have in you. Give me the revelation, Lord God. Give me the understanding, Lord God. And you will walk differently because you're walking in authority. Amen? Oh. <laughs> uh, for many years, uh, a lot of times a lot of people say, oh, no, I'm afraid of you. And I feel so bad because I don't want to be scary. But, and I talked to some people that no way were me. And I uh, about this, and they said, it's because it's the authority you walk in, and sometimes the spirit of man knows that, and it scares people. I used to be afraid of this one lady. She was the nicest, most powerful lady, but I was afraid of her because my fear, my spirit picked up the authority, and it was good. But until I really got to know her, because people, I don't want to scare you, okay? I'm very approachable. Sometimes my thinking is that shows too much on my face, so pretend with me I smile all the time. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> all right. Well, sometimes you've got 10 things on the go and uh, you're just in that place. But we are ambassadors. You're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You have all his rights. If you're an ambassador of Canada and you send it somewhere, you go with all authority. Well, we need to go with all authority and Jesus Christ as his ambassadors. And don't be afraid to tell people, I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Amen. Put a sign out in the bottom of your driveway, ambassador of Jesus Christ. I'm going to do that one day. I keep saying that. Amen? Amen. Representative of Jesus Christ. Because you are. And he gives you all. And when you know that, when you speak that, guess what happens? You get more powerful. Things that you say become more powerful. You get more heavenly minded. You get more minded of the word of God. Amen? So we will need to speak with the words that command power and authority against, especially the demonic power. Amen? My friend that's working up, like some of you know Christine, working up Mackenzie, and um, one thing this woman knows, she, she knows not much. In a way, it's very beautiful. And uh, she was, it was muddy, of course, you there in the spring, it gets muddy. And she walked into the truck, and uh, this side wasn't too muddy, but that side was really muddy. And this side of the door of the truck never opened. It hasn't opened for months and months and months. Just stuck, will not open. So she just said, Faith, walk to that person, God open that door. Mm -hmm. That door opened. Well, the driver, who was the owner of the truck, was shocked. And she knew that God loved her. She did not want to walk in all that mud. Even though, see, we get it. God even loves the little things that we need. Not just the big things, the little things. He's interested. Amen? Amen. So we are sheep. <laughs> and again, I'm going to take a little bit on this Tim Sheep's book. So I can get my spirit mark. We are sheep, and sometimes we talk like sheep instead of like a king. We follow our great shepherd, we listen for his voice, we go where he goes, we follow where no one else will go. But our language is supposed to be the language of kings. Do you know that? Your language is supposed to be the language of kings. Not bowing down sheepishly to uh, this ungodly world. And we back off and we pull back because we're afraid. <laughs> Oh, bind that spirit of fear up in you. Bind that spirit of intimidation up in you. You know how many times I've got to bind that spirit of intimidation? And I've got to pretend that it's not bothering me? You know how many times people have come to me and, oh, I'm just almost shaking inside when I bind that spirit of intimidation. And most of the time I'm going to tell you something. If you were on someone that intimidates you, it's because they're so full of intimidation. Spirits go both ways. They'll intimidate you because they're intimidating. And you bind that thing up. I, I really have a hard time with people that try to intimidate me, you know, with that spirit. And you can bind it up in regular problems. So our language has to be the language of kings. Authoritative. Amen? We need to just say, be bound in Jesus' name. Be bound in Jesus' name. How many of you you got things coming at you right now? How many things you got people have got things coming at you or hindering you? Anybody? Anybody got anything hindering them right now? They'll take authority over it. Bind it up in Jesus' name. 
is like Goliath, flaunting, flaunting. Ah, uh, you can't do this. This is not going to ever work. You're not ever going to get it back. You're never going to get those debts paid. That's a Goliath in your life. Flaunting, 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 flaunting. And you need to run to that thing. And you need to decree what the Word of God says. I'm going to read what David did. You listen. He says he runs to Goliath. Then he starts decreeing. You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. These things that come at you defy the living word. He says, he's so now he starts decreeing. David says, this day, this day, yes, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. See, he took authority. He told the enemy what the Lord was going to do. He decreed what's going to happen. Not the enemy decreed to him what's going to happen. Amen? Amen. And I will, that I decreed again, he said, man, I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. He decreed what he was going to do to that child. Amen. What's your giant? What's your giant? Is it fear? Decree this day, fear. You are not going to have me no more. You have been found out. I bind you up. I command you to go and take your whole family of fear with you. Take the family of fear of rejection. Take the family of fear of being left alone. Take the family of fear of not having enough. Whatever your fear is, there's a whole family decree it today. My God shall supply my needs. Amen. 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 You getting it? Amen. Decree this day. Sickness, I'm telling you today. By his stripes, the blood of the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. And I'm telling you today, you're leaving my body. And you're not coming back. you got to rise up. And take what's yours. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I pray for a spirit of revelation to come upon these people. And they'll take what you have given them. And they'll understand what it's like to walk as a king and authority in the name of Jesus. And we all said, 